The 69-ton Stridsvagen 122 is a Swedish upgrade of the German-made Leopard 2A5 tank and frankly represents some of the most effective armor in the Ukrainian arsenal. Sadly, as is the case with all useful bits of equipment sent to Ukraine, they have only been given 10. With all of them having arrived by September 23rd. So, what differentiates the Stridsvagen 122 from the Leopard 2A5 that makes it arguably more effective in the Ukrainian battlefield? The most obvious benefit is the extra armor, including additional protection to the turret roof. The frontal and turret armor has been increased by 3 tons which is substantial. The fire control system has also been improved to give the gunner better accuracy on the move as well as the distinctive French smoke dispensers that have been added to the sides and banks of 8. The added armor to the roof of the turret should prove to be useful in what has become a very drone-heavy battlefield environment. Either way, the first loss has already been reported with Oryx confirming one damaged and abandoned. The 21st Brigade is the main user of the tank and for several months has been fighting a defensive action in northeastern Ukraine near Kopiansk. Their main task has been to blunt a Russian offensive created purely to upset the Ukrainian efforts in the south. By holding the invaders there, they are giving the troops in the south a chance to continue advancing. From the footage, the tank is clearly abandoned although why, is not clear. If you look closely there doesn't appear to be scorch marks indicative of a mine or ATGM strike which has been the killers in chief for the Russians thus far. If I was to guess, it's a technical issue of some kind. At the end of the day, stuff breaks down and when you are close to the enemy immediate recovery is not always possible. What's more, the drones then get a chance to finish off the tank, which is exactly what they try to do, over and over again. That extra turret armor might make the difference in holding up against the drone assault. If and when Ukrainian engineers recover the tank and assess it, that armor may just help for it only needing repair, instead of scrapping, a Leopard 2 of 4 may not have had a chance. Due to the damage, it will most likely end up in a Polish repair facility, if they are still friendly at that point. Then of course there is the risk that the Russians recover it, and it turns into another propaganda boost for their side. Either way that's 10% of the Swedish tank force already out of the fight with no real chance of replacement. Like with Challenger 2 in the UK, the Swedish only have very few of these tanks available and currently no viable replacement for their own forces. In conclusion, with all the best will towards the Swedish and all other donors, penny packet donations of high-end material are not enough. Please remember it's unlikely that all 10 would have been usable at one time anyway with some held in reserve or undoubtedly under some form of maintenance. This is a really good tank and 40 of them would have made a real difference. Let's hope the remaining 9 get some quality airtime again.